I've been testing and using the Beat Studio Pro for over a week now, and I gotta say, these things are a bit weird. Now, in this review, I'm gonna go over 10, or actually 11, positive things that are great about these headphones, along with five negatives, some that just stump me. Now, I wanna start out with the case because I absolutely love it compared to what I am used to. The material is nice and soft, but adds protection. You have this nice little grab handle, and then when you unzip it inside, we have two little pockets for storage. Now, I also love that they include a three and a half millimeter cable and a USB type C cable, which is not only for charging, but has a really good data transfer. And I'll talk about that in just a bit. And I know the having cables is kind of normal, but you don't get that with all of Apple products these days. Now, one thing I was weary about when I just got these is the headband because it's a typical kind of rubber hard headband. And I thought that'd be uncomfortable. And right when you put them on, you definitely notice it more so than something that is very soft like the AirPods Max. But I've worn these for over six hours and the comfort was great. I never had any buildup of pressure. And with that, uh, same thing with the ear cups, you don't have any pressure that builds up over time. And even though they use this fake leather material that is non-replaceable, I didn't have any heat buildup in my ears. Now, uh, because these are plastic and they're lightweight, when I went running with them, I didn't have any issues. They weren't moving around a ton like you'd get with something that's a lot heavier. The comfort was awesome for working out. So I'd say comfort wise, these are absolutely excellent. For the next positive, even though Apple makes these, they are set up to work great for both iPhones and Android. You get fast pairing on both, you get Find My Support over there, updates, you have an app for Android, whereas with iPhone, all your settings are built in. And with that, I was really surprised by how fast they connect to my iPhone and to my Mac. It's a lot faster than the AirPods Max, which use an older version of Bluetooth. Now we compared the microphone quality in our previous video and it was fairly close. I would say the AirPods were a little bit better. Go ahead and take a listen. This is the microphone quality using the new Beats Studio Pro. And this is the microphone quality using Apple's AirPods Max, which are around two and a half years old now. And now back to the Beats Studio Pro. Let me know what you think in terms of microphone quality, which one sounds better down in the comments below. Now in the real world, when I use these to make phone calls, people thought that I was talking on my phone itself. The call quality is excellent, especially with the voice isolation feature that is supported for them on the iPhone. The next positive is the massive battery life that is built into these. But in the real world, I have to say this might be slightly deceptive or at least pushing the marketing because that is with active noise cancellation off. And most of the time, you're gonna wanna use active noise cancellation, which brings it down to 24 hours. But with that said, the battery life is still excellent and you can easily turn it off using the button. Now, the next positive is the active noise cancellation. Now, I push these to their limits using my super super loud mower, and they absolutely did a killer job. I didn't have to have music playing, and it blocked out most of that sound. Now, I compared the active noise cancellation to the AirPods Max in that video using airplane noise, and in that, they did not do as well as the AirPods Max. So I was a bit disappointed, and it was mostly the higher frequencies that you could hear more than the AirPods Max, but using my Weed Whacker, that is also very loud in those high frequencies, it also did killer, blocking out all of that sound, and using in the office, it was also great. So. If you're worried about that, these actually do a really good job. And the next one is the sound quality. We tested three different tracks on camera and I've listened to a ton of different music and I was very impressed. Now, one test that I did was play low frequency sound waves because they mark this as going down to 20 Hertz. And a lot of brands do this. They'll show the lowest possible, but it 
can't really play at that volume. And I was shocked that at 20 hertz, these actually played loud enough to be helpful in music. So you get the same great super deep bass as the AirPods Max. The high frequencies are also excellent. For some different tracks, they actually sound better than the AirPods Max. And you don't get that same kind of boomy bass that can be a bit annoying that uh, Beats had uh, kind of a reputation for. You have a very nice balanced sound profile and nice deep bass. So sound quality would be a major win for me. And the next positive is the loudness. These things get so loud, especially with high quality audio, that a lot of times I'm actually turning them down. And I love loud music. And I think this is a great selling point because sometimes you're listening to videos or podcasts where the volume is not processed properly. It's too low and having that extra overhead to be able to crank it up is very useful. And with that, the next positive is the very low sound leakage. With these ear cups that have this fake leather, I was surprised that when you're playing at loud volumes, they leak way less sound than the AirPods Max. So if you don't like annoying other people that are next to you, these do a great job at that. And the last positive that I need to highlight is the high-res audio support. This is awesome. You take that USB-C cable, you plug it into your Mac and bam, it is automatically connected, feeding it audio. So you don't have to just use that three and a half mil jack, which you can use um, even if the battery is dead on these, which is awesome. But plugging that in, if you are playing high resolution lossless audio, it supports it unlike these way more expensive headphones. And the reason why these do and these don't is because with AirPods Max, it is constantly processing your audio and down sampling it, where with these, when you plug them in and you turn on lossless, your active noise cancellation will turn off, transparency mode will turn off, and it's just giving you that pure high-res audio. And I was shocked that um, I could definitely notice a difference. Sometimes it's placebo, but in this case, the high-frequency sounds are a lot more detailed and if you want to get the most out of your audio, these support them at this price point. And as for the five issues, the first one is the transparency mode. Even though the microphones work well, the transparency mode actually boosts up your environment more so than in real life, where a lot of headphones, you actually get a quieter sound. Uh, and because of this, you notice background hiss, different kind of stuff like that. And I think that they should be able to fix this with a software update and fine tune it because the microphones do work well. But for now, it is not even close to AirPods Max. Now, the next downside is the fact that when you're listening to these and you take them off, you do not get auto pause. And that absolutely blows my mind for $350 headphones. There's headphones that are under 100 bucks that support this. Now with that, the next one is the fact that when you close these down, and I love that you can close them down like this and store them in your bag, well, you do not get auto off and then auto on when you open them. You have to use the little button right here. And for me, I think this little button is just too small. It's too close. So you kind of have to search for it. Sure, you'll get used to it, but they could have done a better job. Why not put this in on headphones that are $350? You know, they have them in their other beats that we tested before. And I love that feature. You don't have to fumble around. And Apple just took that away. Whereas they put in a gyroscope in here for um, spatial audio and head tracking. That's an extra cost. You know, they did some extra things, but it's almost like they did that on purpose to give AirPods Max, you know, some benefits over these headphones. And the next downside is the fit and finish and the feel. These things are super plasticky. The design is pretty much the same from 2017 and they just creak and they crack and they don't feel really good. And with that, the controls on the side, the buttons also do not feel really high quality. Uh, to be completely honest, these feel like headphones that would be around the $100 price range. And that kind of sucks when you're spending 350 bucks. Now, of course, they're lightweight, but there's other lightweight headphones that are plastic that feel much better. And that leads into the last kind of downside, and that is the price tag. At 350 bucks, 
the value is really up to you. Some people will say, wow, that's a lot of money for headphones, while others will say the sound quality is great, you have the, um, the high-res audio support with USB Type-C, the, you know, some of the other features are really nice, but it's also lacking features. Of course, this is made by Beats, which is now owned by Apple. They like to price their stuff really high. And I just feel like either they could have added, you know, the auto pause, the on and off when you close it and you open it, maybe made it feel a bit better for that price tag, or maybe just drop the price a little bit lower. But with all of that said, after using these for a week, I really like them. And the downsides, while they suck, there's other pos positives that outweigh it. And I think if you're making a choice right now to buy one or the other, I would go for the Beats. They are very, very nice. Check out the link down below. There's often sales shortly after these come out. Click that circle above and check out our full comparison right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.